He has a big development that India Today is currently tracking. Gujarat Chief Minister designate Bhupendra Patel now reaches Raj Bhavan. He's all set to stake claim to form the government in Gujarat. Bhupendra Patel likely to be taking oath as the Chief Minister tomorrow. Bhupendra Patel belongs to the Karwa Patidar community. Previously, in fact, four of the Patidar Chief Ministers earlier belonged to the Liuva Patel community. Here, Bhupendra Patel has been a unanimous choice of the BJP leadership. Of course, so far, there hasn't been any voices of dissent coming in over his announcement. Bhupendra Patel, 59 years old, uh, is now the next Chief Minister of Gujarat who will be leading the party for 2022 polls. In fact, we're looking at the party, of course, get, getting up to counter any kind of anti-incumbency, if at all, it faces after 27 years of rule in Gujarat. Here is the BJP who's announced a new chief minister who will be succeeding Vijay Rupani, Bhupendra Patel now, a one-time MLA who has now been elevated to this massive post as a chief minister. Vidya joining us, who's been tracking Bhupendra Patel's movement all the way to the governor's office. Vidya, what's expected now? He's uh, going to be staking claim to form the government. Take us through the details of the oath-taking ceremony tomorrow. What time, etc. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, certainly the entire cavalcade from the BJP headquarter here in Gujarat has left from here and has already reached the governor's ha of house. I'm joined by Giran Tare, the senior editor at uh, India Today magazine. Uh, you know, have you been able to get hold of the details of the entire schedule that will be uh, from now on? We have the chief minister's name, but what next? When, do, when does the swearing-in happen? Uh, what will be the procedure? When does he take uh, charge of the office? Uh, he has gone to the Raj Bhavan now. I think their appointment is 6.30. At 6.30, they are going to meet the governor. They will claim, they will take their claim to form the government. And tomorrow afternoon, the sources are saying there will be an oath taking ceremony. So probably only the CM will take out tomorrow and the cabinet will be expanded later because there is a talk that there will be two chief ministers, two deputy chief ministers this time. One will be from the OBC community and the other will be from the tribal. Since the CM is from the Patidar community, the deputy CMs will be from the different community. So it will not so, be Mr. Patel again? No, it, there will not be any Patel. True. So Patel has been given a CM post, the biggest post. So that they are trying to formulate who could be accommodated as a DCM, whether it could be Ganpat Vasawa or whether it could be someone from the Thakur community, from the Koli community. Once that is finalized, then the cabinet will be expanded. But as far as the information is getting, only the CM is going to take the vote tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. But by, by tomorrow, will there not be any announcement as well? Uh, I, the swearing-in will obviously be of the Chief Minister only, but will there be no announcement of the ex Cabinet expansion? As well? I don't think so, because my sources are saying that they will wait for some time. Because see, you, this is a very big thing has happened today in Gujarat. Bhupendra Singh Patel is known as Anandi Ben Patel loyalist. And everybody in Gujarat knows that Anandi Ben Patel and Amit Shah doesn't look eye to eye since so many years. So the Amit Shah camp is hugely upset with the appointment of Bhupendra Singh, Bhupendra Patel. And I, let me tell you one thing. Hey, when we are sitting here in Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar, this entire BJP unit is controlled by Amit Shah's loyalists. So Ahmedabad BJP is complete hold, is under control, complete grip of Amit Shah. So Amit Shah's loyalists, Amit Shah's loyalists those the, the workers, the general secretaries, the corporators, the MLAs, it will be very interesting to see how they will respond to Bhupendra's, uh, Bhupendra Patel's appointment as the CA. But Bhupendra Patel is someone who is being now seen as 2022, he, the person who will take the party forward in the next elections. Uh, do you think with this kind of a scenario that you're talking about, will, will it be comfortable for him to really see that 182 figure that these people are really talking uh, about? Bhupendra Patel will not be a magic... Uh, what we can say, he will not be a magician. Anyway, the people of Gujarat is going to vote for the Modi. This is the tradition in Gujarat that... They'll re-establish that. It is only Modi who gets the vote. In the it's only Modi, but this time, Amit Shah versus Anand Ven Patel fractionized, fractionism in the BJP. I can see that that's going to enhance in the coming future. And that could be a problematic scenario for the Bhupendra Patel. Well, uh, so that is Kiran Tare, whose sources are saying that it will be not a smooth ride for... Uh, Bhupendra Patel in the next 15 months at least till the next elections and his performance will certainly right. be rated right. before the election result uh, you know the election the party the state really goes to election
Stay with us, Vidya. I'm going to cut across to uh, Rahul Srivastava. Rahul, we are looking at Bhupendra Patel, who's just reached the governor's office. He's all set to stake claim. But here's the, uh, you know, the talk that's now unfolding, just as he's been announced, that he is Anandi Ben's man. He is Anandi Ben's main man. Anandi Ben and Home Minister Amit Shah never got along. Uh, it's a known fact. And this really brings about a lot of questions on the equations uh, between Amit Shah and, uh, of course, uh, Bhupendra Patel right now, and whether Amit Shah was very happy in, in announcing Bhupendra Patel as the next Chief Minister. Was he even involved in the decision-making at this point? Nabila, when it comes to BJP and now, and since 2013-14, and Gujarat especially, there is no doubt that the driving force the pilot, the navigator is Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister. So if, uh, if Amit Shah had certain views, it is, it is what the Prime Minister says is more critical. Definitely uh, at a time when Anandi Bain, uh, the BJP was to pick up uh, a candidate for Ghatlodia, at that time there was, this was one of the 11 constituencies over which there were differences between uh, the Amit Shah faction and the Anandi Bain faction. Uh, Mani Nagar, uh, Ellisworth and other constituencies, uh, Sabarmati, they were all, uh, they were contests. In fact, for Ghatlodia, the BJP Gujarat Yuva Morcha president, Dr. Ruthwij uh, Patel's name was being pushed by the Amit Shah faction. Uh, and still, Anandi Bain's say prevailed and Mr. Bhupen Patel became an MLA, though with nearly 16,000 le lesser vote margin than Anandi Bain Patel. So the fact is that though there are differences, but such is the stature of the Prime Minister right now, that you will find that these changes are bloodless. There is going to be no, even if somebody has a sense of hard bun, there will be no uh, open e expression of it. Beyond that, I think there are certain very interesting uh, questions which can be raised from here. Is that one very importantly, that now that uh, Akhirwa Patel has been a partidar, has been made as a chief minister in place of uh, Mr. Uh, Rupani, who was a Jain. Will Mr. Nitin Patel, who is a partidar, remain as deputy chief minister? That's not likely to happen. That's a very interesting, important point. The second very interesting element is that if the BJP lost ground in Gujarat, it lost ground in tribal, rural and uh, in the Saurashtra region, the BJP will like to gain regain some stronghold. And in that, the tribal vote is very crucial for the BJP. And in that, the name of Mr. Ganpat was, uh, Singh Vasava, who is uh, from the tri who is a tribal leader, could well be in for an elevation as a deputy chief minister. The BJP will like to make what you call a complete rainbow coalition of caste to win back Gujarat more emphatically than the setbacks of 2017 when it lost 17 odd seats and slid to 99 for the first time a below 100 mark and in that it is a possibility that there could well be an OBC as a deputy chief minister so will the BJP have two uh, deputy chief ministers so what happens to Mr. Nitin Patel who is one of the senior most leaders looked uh, uh, he's not been looked at for a CM elevation for the second time uh, also when Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the top BJP brass in Delhi fix the Council of Ministers. What exactly is going to be the composition in terms of regional representation and also in terms of the drive it wants to provide in terms of one reducing the anti-incumbency and also to ensure that the delivery mechanism and the delivery process improves greatly because if things have to be done the BJP now has nearly nine months because elections, if they are going to be held one year later, then the BJP, uh, before the declaration of the model code of conduct, does not have too much of time. The key factor today, which is very clear, is that the BJP is out to reduce the anti-incumbency it could have faced. One, because being in power for more than two decades, and also the kind of poor track record or the poor perception, negative perception regarding Mr. Vijay Rupani's government and uh, it's in the during the COVID wave and also a lot of MLAs who have been around for a very long time.
Right, uh, Rahul, of course, you did mention on the Deputy Chief Minister. Here are a lot of questions also being raised about the Cabinet expansion. Now, this is a time that the BJP is wanting to ensure that all uh, sides or all leaders are satisfied enough. Do you think there'll be any significant changes? You st uh, let's start with the Deputy Chief Minister itself. You said that there could be a change. Do take us through what could be expected with regards to Cabinet expansion or reshuffle. Yes, uh, Nabila, that's as I said earlier, there was one deputy chief minister, Mr. Nitin Patel, that was to signal to the partidars that one of the uh, senior most positions in the government, though it is not a constitutional position, but it's a, it's a portfolio which was given to Nitin Patel, a partidar. But now that a partidar, though Kerua Patel uh, is a chief minister, the BJP needs to recalibrate its caste equations and 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 uh, the signaling to the voters. In that, the very critical vote is the OBC vote and the tribal vote in, uh, in Gujarat. And the BJP will like to make deeper inroads in that vote segment than it did last time around because it did lose ground, among, especially among the tribals. That's why I said uh, one of the names, in fact, for the chief ministers, one of the, what you call the dark horses was being talked about is that somebody from the tribal community was Mr. Ganpat Singh Vasawa. Will that be he? Will he be one of the two deputy chief ministers? So that a signaling can be done is uh, is uh, extremely important for the BJP. Importantly, when it comes to the constitution of the Council of Ministers for Mr. Bhupendra Patel, the BJP will have to rem remember. Uh, will rem BJP will remember that just a post of a chief minister is not the only thing. Like when the BJP was fixing. The Council of Ministers for Prime Minister Narendra Modi, it kept in mind that the OBC vote is critical for the party in Uttar Pradesh, which is going to polls early next year. And 27 uh, OBC members were inducted into the Council of Ministers. Here again, it has to be a wholesome meal in terms of signaling to uh, the Partidar community. The Partidar community is one fourth of the BJP's vote bank, vote support, so much so in 20, uh, 2012. Uh, out of the 48 percent that the BJP had won, uh, one fourth was the Partidar Patel vote, and that is why uh, last time around, one third of the ministers were from the were Patels, and seven top ministers uh, were from the Patel community. So that number cannot come down. So what one can say is, though a chief minister now is uh, is uh, is a Patel, the dominant caste in Gujarat. The BJP will ensure that their representation in the Council of Minister also remains sizable, that the Patels don't feel that they have got a Chief Minister, but they have lost out uh, in terms of the number of portfolios they held in the Council of Ministers. Well, well, the announcement uh, is just a lead up to uh, much appeasement towards the Patidar community. We know that very recently the Sadar Dham uh, community hub, the business community hub was also inaugurated, a massive uh, building there in, in Ahmedabad. This is of course to boost the confidence that uh, the Patidar community has in the BJP after the massive protests that took place years ago which really cost the BJP at that point of time, the vote bank. Let me cut across to Vidya, who is currently tracking the movement of Bhupendra Patel, who is now at the governor's office, going to be staking claim to form the government in Gujarat. Vidya, do take us through. What more do we know about uh, any word on the cabinet expansion? Will there be any new inductees, uh, a reshuffle, a rejig? Uh, any word on that has come so far? And what time is the oath-taking ceremony tomorrow? Okay, I'm going to try and patch back um, with their, we've lost a connection there, but here uh, India Today on ground tracking all those movements. Right now, Bhupendra Patel is at the governor's office. He is going to be staking claim to form the government. Uh, over to you, Rahul. Uh, like I did mention, Patidar community is, um, is a community that the BJP has really been trying hard to appease since the time they've protested, which, which costed them in 2017. Uh, the recent one being the Sadar Dham um, building, the commercial hub that they've uh, built there at a whopping cost of 200 crore rupees. So this has really boosted the confidence among the uh, Patidar community at large. And now with Bhupendra Patel being announced as the chief minister, this will really, you know, strengthen the vote base of the BJP, which you rightly said 
one fourth of it coming from the Patel community. Nabila, the Sadardham issue is is very critical. It's a side story which is unfolding. Mm -hmm. It is about how the Patel community is trying, uh, is expanding itself. What it is uh, looking at, it's a 11,000 acre, uh, it's a huge complex which has been built up and it will take in thousands of students and help them with scholarships and uh, there's going to be a thousand crore corpus which has been created and there will be one rupee token taken from each child and study and stay and everything is going to get taken care of. These are Patel uh, community students who are going to come in and they are going to try for civil services. All those civil services aspirants uh, uh, from the Patel community are going to get special assistance in that place. Now, if you're looking at this place, uh, it's perhaps Patel community, what, is, uh, what I can what I will say is strengthening its attempt to dominate the politics and administration of Gujarat. And, and, uh, and not just Gujarat, if this uh, effort by the community in helping Patel community students uh, by providing them cheap study and stay for civil services, if it actually clicks, you will have Patel community dominating the civil services across the nation. So that's how critical the Patel community is. That's how the community thinks that it, there is uh, always a constant sense effort to improve and dominate and it originate from the 80s uh, that's when the congress really had a setback that it created a calm theory in which it started focusing on the votes of kshatriyas uh, uh, the harijans the adivasis and the muslims and the patels were very unhappy with it and they shifted en masse to the bjp in 2014 hardik patel created a contest for the first time since the 80s and the BJP did feel jittery and Anandi Ben, uh, as Chief Minister, could not really handle the crisis very well. And eventually she had to leave using the fact that she was touching 75, that unstated policy in the BJP after which you can't hold uh, any official public office. The fact remains that there is now an opportunity for the BJP, the, the, uh, for the Congress party, because... Somewhere last elections, Rahul Gandhi tried the Hindutva card, went to 28 to 30 odd temples and muts and tried to steal the Hindutva element from the BJP. But if, when it comes to comparison to the BJP on the Hindutva element, it is always, Congress is always going to be a poor cousin. But can the Congress party at a time when the BJP faces anti-incumbency, there is a clear admission by the BJP that under Rupani, the BJP's fortune suffered and he could not take them, could not have taken them towards a victory. At that time when the BJP is experimenting with a new chief minister, can the Congress party, through somebody like a Hardik Patel, create a contest for the uh, Patel vote, the Patidar vote, which can be substantive enough to hurt the BJP? I think the Gujarat story has entered a very interesting phase as far as the electoral contest is concerned. Well, uh, Rahul, we understand that today one third of the BJP MLAs are Patels. And now the new chief minister also from the same community. It appears the BJP not leaving any stone unturned to woo their massive vote base ahead of the 2022 polls. Well, here's Gujarat Chief Minister designate Bupendra Patel now with the governor. Uh, Bupendra Patel all set to stay claim as the chief minister, new chief minister of Gujarat. Gujarat Chief Minister designate Bupendra Patel meets with the governor. Here are live visuals coming in as we're showing you. Bupendra Patel takes claim to form the government. Bupendra Patel likely to be taking oaths tomorrow. Here's Bupendra Patel meeting with Gujarat governor. He has staked claim of the government of Gujarat. Bupendra Patel, the new announced chief minister who's, who comes from the Karwa Patidar community. In fact, even the four Patidar chief ministers previously were also um, from the same community, the Patidar community, but belong to the Lua Patel community. Here is Bhupendra Patel now, a one-time MLA 
who seems to be a close man, a close aide, or quite a uh, close confidant of Anandi Ben, the former Chief Minister of Gujarat, who has now been elevated to the big post of Gujarat Chief Minister. Rahul Shivastav joining us as well. Rahul, here's uh, Bhupendra Patel meeting with the Governor of Gujarat. He's a uh, stake claim of the government and of course now all eyes on the cabinet expansion will there be any uh, fresh faces that will be inducted will there be any dropouts and more importantly nitin patel who's a deputy will he will his position be secured henceforth yes namila that's an important question uh, as we can see mr bhupendra patel meeting uh, achara devrat the governor of uh, of Gujarat and Mr. Devrat will invite him to form the government uh, and now he will be uh, after that chief minister designate and uh, he will be going in for his ceremony, ceremony and expansion. The expansion has to be a very careful thing for the BJP. I think uh, the appointment of, of picking up Mr. Bhupen Patel is the first in a series of exercises the BJP will be carrying out. Primarily because now that the Patel vote is critical, the BJP has signaled that by picking Mr. Bhupendra Patel. But what happens to Mr. Nitin Patel, who was till now, till uh, day before yesterday, the most prominent face of the BJP and signal political signal to the Patel community in Gujarat that he was the deputy chief minister. So with a chief minister who is a Patel, will the BJP have one more deputy chief minister Patel? One will have to wait and see. Now, if Mr. If that's going to change, is the BJP going to send a single signal by getting just one, uh, one deputy chief minister, or the BJP is going to address a wider crisis it faced in 2017 that it saw erosion of votes uh, from the tribal, rural, uh, and the Saurashtra belt. If the BJP wants to address, there is a possibility. Some sources are saying that a tribal leader like Ganpat Singh Vasawa, who is a dominant force in the party, though there are a bit of controversies about him, uh, can he be elevated or can somebody who is a tribal be elevated as a deputy chief minister? The next big focus is a dominant, uh, also important OBC vote uh, in Gujarat. The BJP could well try to bring in a deputy chief minister who is from uh, the OBC community. Beyond that, the pelf of and the heft of the Patel vote is indicated by one third of the MLAs of the BJP out of the 99 uh, coming from the Patel community. Seven top ministers currently from the Patel community. Will that domination continue or the BJP will like to tweak in that edge out some ministers from the Patel community who could be facing anti-incumbency? or their performance might be short of expectations and bring in newer Patel leaders uh, to replace them. So a lot of equations are going to get underlined in the next two days when the BJP uh, chief minister designates yeah, and Mr. Bhupen Patel We're Gujarat, waiting to watch out uh, to see what kind, of, uh, what kind of entries will come about within the cabinet under the leadership of Bhupendra Patel. It's a big responsibility on him now on how he's going to keep the boat afloat and keep the flock together, more importantly, without any dissent brewing right ahead of the assembly polls. Rahul Chavasa, thank you very much for joining us with all those details on that.